All right, guys, Dan back again with a, another video. Can you believe it? Usually I leave it about six months between videos, but I'm actually back with another one in less than a month. Uh, today, though, I've got a pretty good reason for wanting to record this video, and that is because in my sweaty palm, I've actually got hold of a copy of the newest version of probably my favorite next-gen Amiga operating system, Morphos, or uh, MorphOS, depending on how you pronounce it. Now, uh, version 3.0, was uh, just released worldwide last Friday. Uh, I'm recording this in uh, the start of June. I think we're on the, uh, you know, the 12th of June today. Um, and Morphos 3 has been rumored for about a year now, actually. And I think a lot of people were expecting it to um, ship for release back in uh, the back end of last year, around December 2011. So it's about six months behind the expected schedule, but it's finally here. So what I'm gonna do is, um, show you how it installs, show you how to download it as well, and talk a little bit about some of the new features and hardware that the latest version of Morphos 3.0 supports. All right, now a few people have complained on my previous videos that the autofocus on my camera is a little bit annoying. Um, I just tried recording this video using manual focus and uh, the screen was really blurry when I watched it back. So uh, I'm afraid we're gonna have to live with it, but hopefully it won't be too bad. It's really only between these scenes when the, uh, the screen modes are changing, really. Uh, but what I'm doing now, then, I'm going to load up the um, Morphos 3.0 ISO that I just burned to a CD, and I uh, will in install it, and I'll show you how the uh, live CD works on my, uh, on my Mac Mini G4, so um, when the camera focuses on the screen. Now, we're booting this up from the CD. You can download this completely free of charge and try it out on uh, your old PowerPC Mac for... Uh, 30 minutes you get to play with it for free and then the operating system will slow down You can give it a reboot and then resume playing with it a bit more if you like you can try it out from the CD as well There's no need to install it straight away if you don't want to So uh, what we get to do when you first boot the OS up is um, they'll give you a language selection here um, We'll pick English and also I'll pick the American keyboard as well as I'm using a slimline Apple keyboard so uh, it's actually got the quotes and the at key, the opposite way around to the British key map. So I always pick American when I'm installing this. And then we're dropped into the ambient desktop here with the longest boot jingle in the world. I don't know if you can hear that. Very epic. Now, uh, I advise that you watch my video that I recorded last year called Why I'm an Amiga User in 2011, if you want to find out a little bit more about Morphos. Um, but to summarize it really, it's an Amiga operating system that was developed back in the 1990s. Um, originally, it was around the era when Commodore had gone bust and SCOM had kind of given up and Gateway were buying out the Amiga. And it looked like the traditional um, workbench operating system wasn't going to get developed anymore. And it was either going to go down the QNX, Linux, or even Windows NT route. So a group of third-party developers, uh, Phase 5 and those guys, decided that they were going to do kind of a rewrite of the classic Amiga OS for a next-generation PowerPC platform. Now, back then, it was the uh, Amigas with power-up and warp-up boards. It was the um, you know PowerPC upgrades to the classic Amigas. Since then, there's been some new PowerPC hardware that's been supported, like the Pegasus 1 and 2, the Effica, and more recently, the um, PowerPC-based Macs as well, of which fa a fair few of them are supported now. So I'm running this on a Mac Mini G4. What's new to Morphos version 3.0, the main thing, is that it now supports the uh, PowerBook G4 as well, the 1.5 gigahertz model. So that really makes Morphos the first next-generation Amiga OS to support portable computers, notebooks, which is really, really cool. As I know the Amiga OS 4 guys, Hyperion, have been working on a version of OS 4 for the uh, for a netbook, but I think that's been rumored and announced for nearly a year now. Nothing's really been updated since, so I think Morphos version 3.0 is definitely the route to go down if you want um, a portable computer with an Amiga OS on. Now, if we click install from this wizard, we can either pick a new installation, which will wipe out your hard disk and install a fresh, or if you've got a previous install like I did, a version 2.7, you click update installation. I've already done this before I started recording the video, so um, I won't do anything now. Or you can explore the CD from here as well, and uh, just kind of try it out from the, the disk itself rather than having to install it. Um, as I've already installed it though, what I'm gonna do is um, eject the CD by pressing the eject key on my Mac keyboard. I should pop out of my machine. There we go. And I'll hold down Control and Option, Option. 
which will give me a hard reboot. I know some Morphos users tend to uh, want to turn the Mac Chime off. I'm a Mac user anyway, so I don't mind it. Now, um, the machine, as you can see by the monitor, it hasn't opened up the um, open firmware yet, so that's still gonna load up. And I'll show you how quickly the operating system loads. So when it goes gray, that's the open firmware. Now the OS is loading from cold. I think it's about a five second boot time, really quick. And there we go to a fully usable desktop. A lot quicker than when I had OS X uh, Tiger installed on this machine. <laughs> Um, so this, what we're looking at here is the ambient desktop, which, as I mentioned before, is um, the Morphos replacement for the traditional Amiga workbench. And I've updated um, my version of it with something called the Ultimate Pack, which I, I'd advise any Morphos user to download. It's completely free, and it will give you a lot of the essential apps that you'll only spend time tracking down yourself anyway, uh, including a lot of them that I'll go through in a moment, but also you get this... Um, Thing called Polynet, which is a rather nice dock at the bottom too. I've quite heavily customised it from the Ultimate Pack install, but it gives you all the basics, so it's definitely worth installing it. Now, uh, the discs are uh, by default partitioned into traditional Amiga partitions. You've got the system disc and the work, and also the RAM disc as well, which is a temporary disc held in RAM that was um, always traditional to the Amiga. We've also got something called Boot down here as well with the boot images in for the Mac which uh, for some reason has now become visible since I've installed version 3.0. Before I didn't get, get that icon on my, on my uh, ambient desktop. Uh, volumes will give you a list of all the uh, assigns and also volumes on your machine. You don't really need that, you can double click on ambient and it will bring it up. So if I go into my system disk, I'll show you a couple of the new things that come by default with Morphos 3.0. We've now got a music player. Um, now it always supported MP3s and various other formats through data types in um, in Multiview before, uh, which we've got here, Multiview, which was an Amiga application, much developed in Morphos. But now there's something called Jukebox, which supports playlists, and you can play uh, multiple files. So if I find uh, a couple of audio files for you, so look at my MP3s folder. Uh, oh, wrong one. So we'll drag all these into it. As you can see, they've come up in there now. Um, I'll set my volume from up here, turn it up a bit. Whip it derezzed. Big fan of the Tron Legacy soundtrack by Daft Punk. Um, and as you can see, we get the full playlist in here. It's nothing that's going to set the world on fire, but it's quite nice having this supported natively in the OS now. And also, one neat feature about Jukebox is that it's actually got a screen bar module as well, so we can put it at the top of the screen up here. As you can see, Morphos supports these um, what are called screen bar modules, which are little widgets that kind of run at the top of your screen. So we can minimize that. And we can still skip through the tracks. Or we can pause it and go back and forward, which is quite cool. Um, you access these either by downloading them or if you right click on the uh, what's called the depth gadget, so they've got something else running in full screen. Um, this is a you know feature that goes back to the earliest days of the Amiga, having native screens that you can flip between with the depth gadget. Or if you right click on it, you get you know access to all the modules there as well, so you can pick which ones appear up there. Um, you can rearrange them, or you can even add new ones that you've downloaded from third parties as well. So Jukebox is a welcome addition. Now if I go back into my system disk, um, we'll check out applications. Now with the Ultimate Pack, you actually get um, some icon replacement packs. So it's quite obvious to see which are the uh, new applications that it's installed, the new utilities that come with 3.0. Flacapella is a CD ripping application that will rip audio CDs to the FLAC format or uh, MP3 as well, I believe. If I check the docs quickly, um, let's get forward. Yeah, it looks like it's might only be flak only, but there you go. You can now rip CDs, uh, CD audio natively in here as well. Um, if we check Jalapeno, this is a very welcome addition to Morphos. This is an, uh, a CD burning application. Before we had to rely on Frying Pan or Make CD, which were third party apps. And uh, I think Frying Pan, you had to pay for it and register it before you could burn anything. So it's a very welcome addition to the OS. I'll find an ISO file. It's really as simple as finding it. There we go, we've got the Morphos 3.0 ISO. Drag and drop it, click burn. Um, you can also right click them and uh, open them and browse them from here, or even right click and burn them using Jalapeno from the context menu as well. So uh, that's a very welcome addition. Big fan of that. Long overdue, I reckon, but you know, nice that the guys finally did it. Uh, Scribble, which has been around a while actually in the um, SDK. This was included in the Morphos software development kit. It's now a default tool in the operating system as well. It's really you know, a text editor with a nice GUI, but also 
Very nice feature for me is the fact that you can export as PDF from this as well, which gives um, an Amiga operating system a bit more compatibility with the outside world, as it's always kind of been one area. Um, Cross-format documents have been a big, you know, a, po a sore point in the Amiga's history. It's always been lacking in that area. Uh, there's no native doc or docx support yet, so um, having PDF and rich text formats very welcome. Um, let's see what else we've got in here as well. Uh, Transfer, which is an FTP client. It's got multi-threading. You can actually uh, connect to various FTP clients. The GUI is very simplistic. I've played with it a bit. It's nice to have it in the OS, but I don't think it's going to drag me away from uh, Ami Trade Center, which is a 68k app, but you know it's still out of all the uh, FTP clients on the Amiga platform. It is the one that I rely on, and you know the one that I'll use the most, really. So yeah, nice to have, but it's not going to drive me away from Ami Trade Center, I don't think. Um, and VPDF, which is very cool. The operating system has now got native PDF support. Now, before we had a, a tool called APDF that most Morphos users had installed. It wasn't the quickest in the world, so it's uh, quite nice to finally have something um, built into the OS. So I put in a USB stick here. Um, we can check a PDF file. Like I'll load this up, double click it, and it will load up here in APDF. And it will also uh, resize on the fly too, which is nice. And you can go and you know zoom in on the pages and have a look around. So you know it's quite nippy, a lot quicker than the old uh, APDF was. So. Another very nice addition to the OS. So those are the new uh, utilities that we get with Morphos version 3.0. The guys have been working very hard on that. Uh, OWB is an update as well. Now, uh, OWB is a WebKit-based CSS-compatible web browser that Fab's worked on. He's done a fantastic job on this as well. Um, an older version has been ported to Amiga OS 4, but the, to be honest, the Morphos version is streets ahead. Now, uh, if you're an Amiga user back in the day, you might be kind of familiar with this user interface. It's kind of based on the old iBrowse web browser um, with a few, you know, well, lots of modern features, including CSS support. And we've got the uh, quick links at the top here, which have uh, got favicons in them, as you can see, which uh, I don't even think Safari on OS 10 has got favicons in the top there. So, you know, that's a nice little addition to... Uh, to OWB, um, you know, it is a very, very nippy little um, uh, WebKit based browser. I'm a big fan of it. And also it supports HTML5 video as well. So if I go to YouTube, this is one feature that the OS4 guys still need to catch up on. Um, I'm logged in here. I think I'm in the HTML5 trial as Morphos doesn't support Flash. Most of the Amiga operating, operating systems don't. Um, very well at least. So we'll, we'll just click on a little video here and I'll show you how it plays in the window. So there we go, we can watch it in the window. So there we go, that's something that's, uh, I know to people that are not Amiga fans, that'll be like, well, you know, I've been able to do that for like, you know, 10, 15 years. For uh, an Amiga-esque operating system, that is quite a big step ahead, so uh, it's nice to see that built in to OWB now. Um, and also, there's been a few changes to uh, Magic User Interface, MUI as well. Uh, if I can go back into the prefs here. The screen um, system's had a bit of a change. You can now literally pick an application, define a new screen on the fly, rather than having to bring up that old cumbersome screen manager that we had before. Uh, Windows have had some changes now as well. I believe these are all new features. So if we uh, we can define backgrounds and colors from within the movie prefs now as well. And uh, the same with requesters, if you want to change that. Uh, buttons have had some changes too. I should just go back to that and quickly show you. Um, there was frames that are now supported on Windows. Here we go, frames. So you can pick all these different frames. So if you, uh, say for example, I open this, the dock that I've got at the bottom here is a movie app. You can see it's got a frame around it at the bottom there. These are defined using the uh, frames options here. Um, I've removed it for the main dock itself, but these, you know, these are really cool. You can define these and, you know, set, you know, a lot of these different looks from down here too. I presume there'll be some third party ones added to it. Same with buttons as well. You can define them, how they look too. So uh, that's very nice. Now, uh, under the hood, there's been a lot of changes as well. The PFS file system that was quite a famous Amiga um, file system back in the day, PFS3, is now supported natively from boot, so you can boot up from a PFS3 partition. There's also been um, updates to uh, EXT and um, FF SFS 
file formats as well. A lot of those are a lot quicker. And uh, Warp 3D has been updated as well, I believe. Now, I'm not much of a gamer. However, I've heard a lot of people in the community talking about this. The fact that now um, the 3D performance in Morph OS is much improved. Um, people that have been running benchmarks on games like Quake 3 have reported anything from 40% to 400% speed increases. Now, unfortunately, I haven't got any games installed to kind of give you a bit of an overview of that. You'll have to take my word for it for now, but um, I check a few of the forums and the benchmarks. Apparently, the 3D performance has been much improved. Now, I'm loading up Simple Mail here, which is... I'm just going to show a few of the utilities that I run. I didn't shut this down properly last time, so it's having to, like, rebuild the folder again. Um, usually, it wouldn't have to do that. So if you remember Yam on the Amiga, um, this is kind of like Yam, but it's been uh, redeveloped and um, enhanced a lot. And it supports HTML5 emails, and, uh, HTML emails rather. As you can see, if I shut it down properly, unload it up, it will load in a couple of seconds. Rather than have to scan the whole folder again. So there we go. So uh, I use that quite regularly. We've also got um, Polyglot as well, which is an MSN client. I quite like this one as well. It's quite a, a full-featured very slick looking um, UI in here as well. You get smiley support in there too. I do quite like that one. That's quite nice. So we'll minimize that. I don't want to chat to him, so we'll close that. Uh, Wookie Chat, which is um, an IRC client that's available on all the Mega platforms. This supports multiple connections to different servers down the bottom, all in one window as well, which is very cool. Uh, it's got a very nice UI. Jack did a great job on this. Unfortunately, you dropped more for support, but you can run the 68K version under uh, Morphos as well, so we can go through and see a few of the different clients and servers I'm connected to, so you can hang out. There's actually, I'm normally hanging out in Fnet in um, in Hash Amiga, if you're ever around, definitely worth joining us in there. Uh, and Directory Opus, as I showed you before, which uh, is another famous, you know, old school Amiga app. There's a Morphos version of that too. Um, so I think that's probably about all of the uh, new features I've got to show you in Morphos version 3. Um, the traditional Amiga shell has been upgraded. MuiCon it's called now, but you know, it, it retains all of the traditional Amiga commands. And a few people have asked me how, um, how Morphos copes with running 68k apps now. It is probably the most capable next-gen Amiga uh, uh, operating system of running last-generation apps. Uh, if I find one that was quite fun, like Word was seven, that was a, that was a very big. I think someone just highlighted me in there. There we go. Someone's saying hello. Um, so if I load Word was seven, that was a very famous um, Amiga word processor back in the nineties. As you can see, it looks beautiful on this screen. If you used like a high-end Amiga before, then uh, as you can see, this looks absolutely gorgeous on this big screen. Everything's supported as well. You can load the documents, you know, drag and drop into the deposit there on Ambient, and it load them up in here. So 68K support is fantastic on Morphos. So there you go, that's been a quick look at Morphos version 3.0. I'll include some links if you want to download this and try it out maybe on your uh, PowerPC platform. Um, and also there's a, a little review that I found that's quite nice as well. So um, I can't remember the author's name. Um, I'll try and link to that as well so you can see like a text explanation of what went on. I'll include my uh, Google Plus and Twitter links as well if you want to follow me on there and keep in touch with me. And I'll be back soon, hopefully, with another video. Thank you for watching.